lot of ways to get weather and we'll talk about a couple of them in this video. We'll talk about flight service stations and how you'd get a weather briefing with them. We'll also look at METARs and TAFs and other forecasts on the aviationweather.gov website. A flight service station used to be a weather station on the airport that you would walk into and get your weather briefing. Of course, over time they cut down costs and they shipped all these services off to different places. So now it's just a phone line and they also have a website for a flight service station. Now save this number in your phone. It's 1-800-WX-BRIEF or 1-800-992-7433. Even if you don't think you're going to use it, please save that number. A flight service station is where you can get your weather and where you can file a flight plan. So once you call that number, you can get a weather briefing. And you should get a weather briefing every time you go flying. Even if you're just going out to do practice takeoffs and landings in the traffic pattern. Why would you want to do that? Because safety. And in case you miss something doing your own research, this is a great way to make sure that you don't miss anything. Now if you're a millennial and you don't talk on the phone, take a few deep breaths before you dial the number. It's actually fairly simple. So you call up a flight service station and they will need a few things from you before they can give you a weather briefing. The first thing they need is your tail number of the airplane you're flying. And then whether you're flying VFR or IFR. And then your departure destination and the route. And your route might be, oh I'm staying in the local area, so give me a briefing for like a 5 mile, 10 mile radius or something. And it's really helpful to tell the briefer what type of briefing you want, because there are three different types. The standard briefing is the most complete briefing, and this is the briefing that you want if you didn't get any weather yet. So if this is your first time looking at the weather, you get a standard briefing. Some of the things that are included in a standard briefing are things like adverse conditions, thunderstorms and icing. You get a synopsis or the big picture overview of fronts and weather systems in the area of your flight. You'll get current conditions and route forecasts and the destination forecast. And you'll also get NOTAMs and TFRs and any airspace things like restricted airspaces or military operating areas. And then ATC delays if you're going in a busy airport. So that's a standard briefing. Anytime you go fly, you should get a standard briefing. You can also get an abbreviated briefing, and an abbreviated briefing is a shortened version of a standard briefing, and it's basically a supplement to what you already got. An outlook briefing is for a flight that's six or more hours away, and this can help you decide on what altitude, what route you're going to use, where you're going to stop for fuel based on weather and weather patterns. As I mentioned, something else a flight service station can do for you is file a flight plan. So when you get a weather briefing, you can ask them to file a flight plan at the same time, and then they'll get your name and other information that goes on a flight plan and file it for you. And now they have all this on the website as well, so you can get a briefing on the website, you can file flight plans. They also have a messaging service that'll send you an SMS to open or close your flight plan, and that's at 1-800-WXBrief.com. For the rest of the video, we will be on aviationweather.gov. You might ask why? And that's because that's where the written test comes from. There are better graphics and better websites, but this is the official NOAA website that the FAA uses for the written test. Remember this for the rest of your career. Everything you read is true north. Everything you hear is magnetic north. And this is pertaining to winds. All the weather you get, like a METAR and a TAF, all your winds are going to be in true north. When the tower tells you... Delta 3071 Atlanta Tower, wind 110 at 11. That's magnetic. Everything you hear on the ASOS over the radio... Wind 120 at 08. That's magnetic. That will save you some grief on the written tests going forward. Now then, the METAR. I'm sure by now you know how to read a METAR. If not, I have a video on that. Here are some nuisances and interesting things about METARs. They come out between 53 to 55 minutes past the hour. If you wanted to look up weather in Hawaii or Alaska, remember it's PH and PA, and everything else in the States starts with the letter K or Kilo. Auto means that it's an automated source generating the weather. AO1 means that the station can't tell the difference between the different precipitations, and AO2 means that it can. So it can tell whether it's snow or rain or drizzle or something like that. A01 can just tell that there's precipitation. COR means it's a corrected report. If you see RVR, that's runway visual range. This is how far down the runway you can see out of a moving aircraft, and it's measured in feet. You'll see the runway number and then what the RVR is. VC means in the vicinity of or within 5 to 10 miles of the airport. Pressure falling rapidly and pressure rising rapidly are good to know. 
And if there's a dollar sign, it means that it's going to cost some money to fix the station because maintenance is needed. One final note about the METAR is make sure you look at the trends and not just the latest weather information. But if you do have a TAF, look at a TAF. TAFs are forecasts for 5 miles around the airport. They're either good for 24 or 30 hours and they get updated about 4 times a day or more if weather is changing. P6M stands for plus 6 miles of visibility and that's as high as it goes. Tempo means it's a temporary condition that's expected to last less than an hour. Prob is the probability in percent of thunderstorms or precipitation. And then the only cloud type on the TAF is a cumulonimbus cloud. You might have heard of a PIREP or a pilot report. And this is the only real-time report that we can get about turbulence and icing and cloud heights. Everything else is a forecast. Speaking of, the way we get weather is by launching weather balloons. Twice a day at specific locations, weather balloons are launched with a radio zond or a weather measuring probe. And it's a giant balloon that expands as it rises. And as it goes up, the weather measuring equipment measures winds and temperatures and pressures and all that stuff on the way up. And eventually the balloon gets big, pops, and everything falls down with the parachute. So that's how we get weather reports and forecasts. But there are also pilot reports. And most airlines automatically report weather as well. If you look over the Atlantic on the air pilot report section on the aviationweather.gov website, you can see that every 10 degrees roughly, airplanes are reporting weather because it's automated. Now back after that detour, pilot reports are fairly simple and easy to give to ATC. They just need some basic things. Uh, if you're not in radar contact with them, they need to know where you are, uh, what your airplane type is, your altitude, and what you want to report. Some examples of things you can tell them are cloud bases or tops, haze, flight visibility, turbulence, or icing. Speaking of turbulence, there's either light, moderate, severe, or extreme. And it's either turbulence or it's chop. And the difference between the two is turbulence is like a jolt that messes with your altitude and attitude, whereas chop is kind of like going down the gravel road. It's just up and down constant motion and it's kind of rhythmic and nothing really changes. Your altitude stays the same, you can hold altitude and it doesn't pitch you or roll you anywhere. So that's the difference. Now for icing, there are three types. There's clear, rhyme and mixed. Icing is obviously bad because it adds weight, it adds drag, it reduces lift by messing up your airflow and it sticks to all sorts of things like your air intake for the engine and the propeller and the pitot tubes and the windshield. So none of it's really good. Clear ice is the most dangerous type of ice, and this is because supercooled water droplets cause this type of ice. If you remember from the weather video, supercooled water droplets can happen because they have nothing to condense onto, and then liquid water can exist below freezing. And it stays that way until your airplane shows up, and then that water splashes and instantly freezes onto your airplane because it's below freezing. With this type of ice, there aren't any air bubbles or imperfections in the ice, and so it goes right on your airplane. And as you pick up more and more water droplets, it just grows more and more on your leading edge and sometimes it even forms two horns coming off of the front. Rime ice is this milky, white, opaque, uh, rough type of ice and it's really coarse as well. And for this to form, your airplane has to be below freezing and as the water droplets impact, they freeze and they don't flow anywhere. And they keep piling on each other and there are gaps and air bubbles and all sorts of imperfections in that ice. And that's why it's all rough and coarse and it definitely messes with your aerodynamics. Now you can get both clear and rime ice and that's called mixed ice. And as a final note, you can think of clear ice as those fancy ice cubes. You know, the clear ones that are like restaurant types and stuff. And then the rime ice is what you get out of your refrigerator. It's kind of milky and opaque and things like that. Okay, so that was a little bit of a detour, but you can tell ATC the type and intensity of icing that you have. And then finally, the very first thing you see on the report is the urgency of the report. UA is a normal report and UUA is an urgent report. So let's look at a couple. Also one last note, when you read the pilot report, you look at the information in between the lines. So like OVBRD, that's one block of information, TM2311 is another chunk of information. So read between the lines. So this pilot report was over Brainerd and it's a regular report, UA is regular. So the first thing is location over Brainerd. The time was 2311 Zulu. Altitude was flight level 370. The type of aircraft was a Boeing 747-800. And they reported turbulence, continuous, moderate, chop. 
Once again, chop is like going down the gravel road. Here's another one. Pilot report. I think that's Santa Barbara. It's a regular report. It's over the SBA VOR on the 270 radial at one mile. So one mile to the west of the VOR. The time was 2314. They were at flight level 013 or 1300 feet. The type was a DA-40, which is a diamond aircraft. Sky condition was broken at 500 and tops were at 1200. I'd like to point out that if you're a Boeing 747 pilot and you read a pilot report about severe turbulence from a diamond aircraft like we had in the example, chances are you might not take it as seriously as if it's another Boeing 747 reporting turbulence. Something to think about. We'll look at a couple more examples and then I'll wrap up the video. On the aviationweather.gov website, if you go to aircraft reports, you can click on the interactive map and see where the pilot reports have happened. When you click on one, you'll be able to see the decoded pilot report, but you need to know how to read the raw format. So this one's, for example, over UIN. There's a time, flight level, type of aircraft, turbulence continuous, moderate, and it ended below 21,000. This next one is an urgent report over Papa Alpha Hotel on the 140 radial at 43 miles. There's a time, it was at 13,000, it was uh, Cessna 421, turbulence extreme, and the remarks, there's no injuries and no damage. Once again, UUA means that it's an urgent report. In this example, the person reported that it was overcast at 1,000. Here's another urgent report at 2,500 feet, and the type of aircraft was a Cessna 206. They reported turbulence, severe to moderate, and the remark that they made was that the moderate to severe turbulence was two and a half miles northwest of Palm Springs Airport. So you can add your own little remarks in the pie reps. This video got out of hand and got a little bit long, so we'll pause it right here. Please come back for part two of Aviation Weather Services. Until next time, have fun, fly safe, and always keep learning. See you next time.